welcome you to the house of the Lord here at St. John. Who are we? What are we about? We are St. John's growing in Jesus and spreading his saving grace. And we have a memory verse, which is the first commandment and its explanation. It is, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We are here on this Sunday, January 31st for 2021. And our first hymn today is hymn 904, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. And may the Lord bless our time in His house today.
The scripture reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, a new prophet like Moses. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired the Lord your God at court on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. In our freedom, not causing others to stumble. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as real, really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel of St. Mark, the first chapter. Here Jesus teaches with authority and shows his power over unclean spirits. They went to Duke Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, Who is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once... His fame spread throughout, everywhere, throughout all the surrounding regions of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly 
already said in the heavens, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Coming to the Lord, we know our shame and our sin, for it is ever before us and pointed out to us by the the law of God, the Ten Commandments, which we recite together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. But through the forgiveness won by Jesus on the cross on Calvary, we are able to come to our Lord and Savior and stand before our gracious God. What Jesus has done and what it means for us through the forgiveness of sins is pointed out briefly in the Apostles' Creed, as well as God as Creator and also the Holy Spirit who brings faith to our hearts. We confess and celebrate our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lasting. Amen. Being made a member of the family of God through the adoption, through our adoption in holy baptism, we are privileged with Jesus to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Welcome Sylvia forward to share a lesson with all of God's children today. Good morning. Good morning. Today we have a bright sunny day. It's so nice to be able to see the sun two days in a row at this point. Let's pray that that continues. I want to talk to you about something that I think probably happens to all of us at some point in our lives. Have you ever had somebody tell you something that wasn't true? What do we oftentimes call those words when somebody tells us something that isn't lies. true? Um, a lie. Did that ever happen in the Bible? Actually, it happened very, very early on. <coughs> it continues to happen even into our day. We all have had people lie to us, and we probably have done the same thing, lied to others. Maybe you lied to mom and dad when they said, did you pick up your room? Oh, yes, all of my toys are picked up. Were they really? Eve, a very long 
little time ago and got lied to, she had a very important lie told to her. She was told that, don't worry, God understands. Go ahead and eat this fruit. It's going to make you like God. It's going to make you know everything. And Eve believed that lie. Ever since then, there have been lots of people that came into the world that have come into the world and have told lies to God's people. And many of the people have followed those false prophets. And I want to kind of spend a couple of minutes talking about false prophets. Mrs. Neighbor read some words a few minutes ago from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy, where Moses was talking. And the important words that I want to highlight are, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. So who is that prophet that was raised up? Who is that person that we need to listen to? Jesus. Jesus. Very important that we remember. Jesus is not going to lie to us. Jesus is God. He's not going to tell us something that isn't true. So whenever you hear somebody tell you something, stop for just a moment and think, is this Jesus talking through this person? Do I want to follow them? And if you think, maybe, pray about it. Talk to God. Talk to Jesus. And ask them for guidance. Really important for us, I think, in any point in history, but maybe because of everything going on in the world right now, we need to pay attention to that a little bit more strongly. Talk to God and ask for God's guidance when you're faced with people telling you something and you need to know, is it true or not? Is this a true prophet or is this a false prophet? We know that God keeps his promises. He sent Jesus into the world as the best prophet of ever to die for our sins so that we can come back alive with him and spread the word and be with him in heaven when we do die someday. That we're not going to go to hell. That we get to go and spend eternity in heaven with Jesus singing his praises. What a glorious lesson that is. What a glorious time that's going to be. Something that we don't need to be afraid of. If you fold your hands and say the words of the prayer after me. Dear Holy Spirit, dear Holy Spirit, thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for coming into my life. And help me, and help help me. to be able to tell the difference. To be able to tell the difference between true prophet like Jesus, between true prophet like Jesus, and a false prophet, someone who is lying to me, and a false prophet, someone who is lying to me. Help me, help me to trust you, to trust you, and to bring others, and to bring others to know of your love, to know of your love, your forgiveness, your forgiveness, and your salvation, and your salvation. In your precious name, we pray. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Now, as I go back to my seat, we're going to sing a, a hymn about how important it is for us to all join our voices to sing to Jesus.
grace, the mercy, and the peace of our living and loving Lord be in your hearts and be seen in those things that you think and say and do each day. From our Gospel lesson, Mark chapter 1. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. How well do you know God? Ian was driving down the street in a sweat because he had an important meeting and he couldn't find a parking space. Looking up to heaven, he said, Lord, take pity on me. If you find me a parking space, I'll go to Mass every Sunday for the rest of my life and give up the Irish whiskey. Well, miraculously, a space appeared. And Ian looked up again and said, never mind. I found one. How like God to bless. And how like us to miss the blessings that God truly provides. Today's gospel lesson has Jesus in the port city of Capernaum. It's on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus used Capernaum as a home base for his ministry in northern Israel, the province of Galilee. Early in his ministry, Jesus starts with a bang. After his baptism by John the baptizer near Jerusalem and spending those 40 days of fasting and tempting in the wilderness, Mark has Jesus at Capernaum preaching with power and backing up powerful words with powerful words. Miracles. <coughs> Excuse me. Here, it was a man who had an unclean spirit, a demon who recognized Jesus for who he is, the Holy One of God. Jesus cast him out of the man, and with a loud cry, the man was free. Everyone who saw it wondered in amazement, who is this Jesus? And they couldn't help but talk about what they had seen and heard. And soon, the text says, his fame spread everywhere throughout all the region of Galilee. And before you know it, every one of their cousins were bringing their sick and the lame and the blind. Everyone who had any ailment all came to Jesus for healing. It seems that everyone knew about Jesus. Everyone was talking about this Jesus, this prophet out of Nazareth, the backwater of Galilee. After this episode in the synagogue, Mark reports that Jesus went to Simon Peter, his mother-in-law's house, where he healed her of, of a fever. And the text says that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together about at the door. Everyone was there. Boy, did word of Jesus spread. But what did they really know about Jesus? What did they really expect him to do for them? I bet that like our friend Ian, their expectations of God were a bit different than the true blessings he wants to give. Ian was looking for a parking space and missed the real blessing of a giving and caring God. Those who brought their sick and dying to Jesus knew Jesus could heal their bodies, but they may not have heard or even wanted to hear his call to repent and believe the good news. It's not that they didn't know about Jesus or trust him as the great physician, but did they know him as he truly is and what blessings he truly came to give? You and I are blessed to know why he came. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came to bring help and hope through the forgiveness. 
forgiveness of sins through the loving presence of our gracious Father in heaven. He came to call sinners to repentance, that we together may find forgiveness through his blood on a cross made for us. More than just the healer of our body, Jesus brings healing for our spirits, our soul. He gives us true forgiveness and peace. There are many in our world who know the name of Jesus. Many call on him when they're in desperate need and find, to find healing or maybe even just a parking spot. But he is so, so much more. There is salvation found in the name of Jesus. In fact, there's no other name under heaven or on earth by which we must be saved. And there's comfort in Jesus' name. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you, God said. You know how Jesus has blessed you. And there's life in Jesus' name. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, he said. We know that the life Jesus brings extends beyond this life. We're blessed to spend eternity with God himself. There is no greater life, no greater hope in this life than that. But we may know people like Ian who call on the name of the Lord when in need, but miss the real blessing of knowing God as a child of God. And there is something we can do. We can be people of prayer. We can make a list of those people that we know who need to know Jesus better or need to know Him in the first place. We can write their names down. You don't have to have first names or last names. You know who they are, and so does God. Write them down and pray. Pray every day that God sends the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts and bring or strengthen faith in them, true faith in Jesus. This is part of our spreading the saving grace of Jesus. And it's also part of our own growth. In Jesus. It's part of being a child of God. Not just when we need a parking space or need healing, but every day. Did you notice that despite Ian's missing the real blessing of God, God continues to bless? That's good news for Ian, and it's also good news for us. Like Ian, we too can be blessed by God and miss the real gift of the love and forgiveness of our Heavenly Father. For whether we've been believers all of our life or are new to the faith, we thank God for His patience with us. We still need to grow in faith. We still need God's forgiveness. We still count on his promise that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, what a gracious God and Father we have. We've just been through a great trial, and still we fight the COVID-19 virus. But we're still together. And we will soon return to the house of the Lord. His love never failed, nor his forgiveness. We never lost hope in him, nor did we lose sight of the heaven to which he calls us. And now we ask this of our gracious God and Savior. God grant us growth in our hearts and in our churches. All for Jesus. Because of his great love and forgiveness. Amen. And may God's peace, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Amen. At this time in our service, we would normally be receiving the tithes and offerings of God's people, but during COVID, this COVID time, we receive them through the mail, or you may bring them in through the, to the office at regular office hours. Thank you for your faithfulness in sharing with the house of the Lord and being a person that takes the call of God seriously, that we support the mission and ministry that God has called each of us to do. We turn to the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for your loving care of your children and for all your servants and those whose first names that we mentioned before you. Bless your servants with the gifts of healing when and where you know it is best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are people we know among our family and friends who need to know you or know your love more clearly. Hear our silent prayers for those whom we know among our family and friends whom we name before you in our hearts. Send the Holy Spirit to them to open their hearts to your loving grace and open our hearts and mouths to speak of our joy in trusting you as our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Doris Buzzard and Nancy Erickson and Dalton Johnson. As we are your children, Lord, renew our faith in your forgiveness your presence in our life and our response of faithfully living as your child. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, have mercy. And finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Lord of all, by your hands all things were made. In your word is power over order over or disorder and chaos, life and darkness, life and death. Grant your spirit that we may become instruments of yours by your grace, humbly serving you through the perfect prophet and savior of this world. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And blessed Lord, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, 
through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me.
We're so glad that you are with us today, and we pray God's blessing upon you as we celebrate the love, the forgiveness, and the life that we have in Jesus. And I have some great news for you. For next Sunday, February the 7th of 2021, those that are able to get out of their homes, we are returning to the house of the Lord for in-person worship. We will continue to record the Sunday services and make them available on the Wednesday following. So come to church next Sunday, February the 7th. Masks and social distancing apply, and we will be in the house of the Lord. And may Jesus bless your walk with him this week.